composite figure note. All right. So I told y'all this was coming. It's composite figures. This is why it's important for you to know area of individual figures, because now you're gonna have to do more, do more than one figure at once. So composite figures. Uh, a composite figure is a figure that is divided. Well, that can be divided. Excuse me. Divided with the ED into shapes. I'm trying to remember the words that are basic plane figures like triangles, parallelograms, trapezoids, rectangles, circles, etc. All the stuff you should know the area of individually already. <coughs> to find the area of a composite figure, divide up the regions and find each area then find the sum of the areas sum meaning add the areas together it's a pretty easy concept you just gotta make sure you know doing what you need to do correctly and you gotta be able to see on the figure they actually did good last time we'll see how y'all do you gotta be able to see what you need and what adjustments need to be made <coughs> alright the first one so directions down here for these. It says find the area of each figure below round to the nearest hundreds. It says use 3.14 for pi. <coughs> Number one. Uh, one. What two shapes you see but what two shapes do you see on number one? Alright, so I'm gonna write that down. I'm gonna abbreviate too. Let's say A of a rectangle. I label so I know what I'm doing. <coughs> Plus the A, which is area, of a trapezoid. I'm going to just say trap. Area of a rect plus area of a trap. This is what I need to find the area of this figure, this composite figure. Mr. Swing, your music may not be going. Make sure you get your headphones up. <coughs> uh, area of a rectangle. One, what's that formula? <laughs> Say it again. Y'all can use your notes right now. Like at some point you're going to commit this to memory, but go, go ahead. Area equals length times width. <coughs> oh, I need to put another plus sign. All right, so let's do the rectangle. A equals what's the length? 23 with 12 23 times 12 276 this is centimeter squared now we need to go back and find area of our trapezoid one area formula for a trapezoid I should be spitting these out to me at this point. Aiden. Thank you. I'm recording y'all. Chill, man. Shut up, uh, Reese. <laughs> Alright, for the trap, we need to make sure we have everything we need. For the trapezoid, we need height and base 1 and base 2. What's my height? Somebody tell me how you got that. Good. I'm glad you can see. That's the adjustment that needs to be made here. You need a height of your trapezoid. The height of your trapezoid will be 18 minus 12. 6 centimeters. I see base 1. What would base 2 be? Base 2 would be 23. You can move this 23 down. I hope everybody understands that. <coughs> then from now I'm good. I got my numbers. I'm rolling back over. 1 half times 6 parentheses 
15 plus 23. Whenever y'all get that math, y'all can spit it out to me. One fourteen. This is centimeter squared. Once you get those two, now you add these areas so you can get the total area of your composite figure. Three hundred and ninety. Centimeter squared. You good? <laughs> Since he had, I might as well ask him. Irvin, number two, what three shapes you see? Uh huh. Yeah, we don't call it that though. Anybody know what we call it? Somebody said it. Semicircle. Yes. <coughs> so I'm the triangle first. A of a try. Plus. A of a rectangle or a rec plus A of a semicircle. Alright. So we're going to triangle first and write my formula so I know what I need. Uh, what's his name? Irvin, what's the area of a triangle formula? Base times height. Right. So that means I need a base and a height for my triangle. Somebody impress me. How you get that, Mono? So Mono says. On this rectangle, he got nine up here. So I'm assuming he's saying down here he knows this is nine feet on this rectangle, right? But that nine feet on the bottom of this rectangle also represents what on the circle, Amano? No, well, what on the circle? What is this, Amano, on the circle? Thank you, sir. So if the radius is nine this way, on this, going this direction right here, the radius will have to be nine too, right? That also represents the base of your triangle. Y'all follow? Chris, you follow that? Are we talking too fast? I'm, I'm being serious. <coughs> All right. So that's my base. I need a height for my triangle now. Somebody else impress me with that. I'll mark it off. I need to know this length right here. Because it looks the same, I don't mean it is. That is true, come on. You <laughs> laughing, but I'm in the saying the right thing. What you should know about a radius of a circle. Radius it stands out from the center of a circle out to each uh, point on the circle. So I can extend my radius this way too. Nine feet right here as well. I wanted y'all to tell me that on your own, but whatever. But I think you said the height was nine. The height ain't nine. Thank you. So now that we got that. For those who don't understand what we're doing, whole figure is 26 feet. If I want to know this height right here, take this 9 out for this radius, and I take the 7 out for this piece up here. So 26 minus 9 minus 7. <coughs> Give me 10 feet. 
Ten feet does look closer now, but it ain't now. Eight equals twenty-five. Alright. Then from that, eight equals one half times nine times ten. Eight equals forty-five, like you said, feet squared. I told you, you work better over here, Mano. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. What? Alright, next one. Rectangle. Raise formula for every rectangle. <laughs> the shame of it is you stuck and we just did it on the last problem. What numbers y'all using? Good. 17 and 9. Let me show you the 17, Reese. Rectangle goes from here to here. <coughs> 10 plus 7 will give you that. Thank you, sir. So 17 times 9. 153. This is feet squared. And the last one is a semicircle. Let's see if somebody in here on point. We know. Um. <laughs> well, that represents a circle. How am I find a semicircle? Exactly. Shh. Reese, you need you ain't listening. You need to be listening. Sometimes you have to make adjustments to your formula, but you should be smart enough to do this. <coughs> Y'all should know the area formula for a circle is pi r squared. If I wanted to find half a circle, I mean, it's really easy to think about. I would just take that and divide it by two. <coughs> like a minus it, divide by two. Or you can do like some people want to do. You can divide by two or like you can put the one half in front. Either way, it's the same thing. Don't do both, though. Alright, on this one, 3.14 times my radius, which is what? Times nine, times nine, divided by two. We nope. forgot to divide by two. No, no, he's talking about this before you get to that. It's going to be 254.3.34. And then you divide by 2. 127.17. I'll take that. I remember that number. Feet squared. And then after that, like she said, you need to add all of your pieces up. And you'll get what now? 325.17. Feet squared. I don't know how he got that. I want y'all to do the basketball problem without me. I'll come back. I'm going to read it, though. Luis is going to paint a basketball court on his driveway. The basketball court consists of a rectangle and a semicircle. They give you the two shapes, Reese. Reese, they tell you the two shapes. It says it consists of a rectangle and a semicircle. It says if Luis uh, plans to buy special coating for the basketball court at $23.75 a can, and each can covers 20 square feet, how much is Luis going to spend? Before you can figure out how much he's going to spend, you need to find out the area of the court. They gave you the two shapes to set up. Find your area of your two shapes together. And then see if you can figure out what the total cost is of uh, the paint they're going to buy. <coughs> Don't you do it on your own, though. Don't wait for me.
Or is she working hard or hardly working? Which one? You got an opportunity to be learning this right now, and you choosing not to. And it's really not that hard, Reese. It's just about practicing it. You can't explain it. You can't explain it. <laughs> All right. So the area part should have been easy for y'all. Most of y'all got the area that I need y'all to get. 105.12, right? Something like that. <laughs> then after that, you need to figure out uh, what's the color of the paint the paint he's going to buy. So most of y'all started here, and this is okay. Y'all divided by 20 square feet because it said each can is going to cover 20 square feet. So once you do that, shh, you don't know what you're doing, Reese. Oh, no. Huh, okay. Could have told, told me that a few minutes ago, but okay. Uh, you don't be, you don't be no. What was this decimal here? Five point two five six. A lot of people stop right here and they say, okay, I'm gonna multiply the price by the price. But the problem is, you gotta understand what this represents right here. This is showing you how many cans of paint you need right here. So you got 5.256. The thing, the issue is, you can't buy that number of cans of paint. You can't buy 5.256. How many cans of paint are you going to need? Oh boy, six. <laughs> You're going to need six cans. Then you take that number and multiply by your price, and you get the right amount of what you're going to pay. Times your price, which is. 23.75 that's when y'all got the 142.50 is money so that zero should be at the end $142.50 I'm going to back real quick Give me five minutes. This ain't gonna take me long. Maybe six. Maybe seven. <laughs> All right, on the back. Similar to what we've been doing, except for your figure is gonna be on the uh, coordinate plane now. Number four. This problem it says, what is the perimeter of a rectangle? It's perimeter of a rectangle with vertices C negative one da 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 D A A E F round your answer to the nearest hundreds. So on this one graphing that figure first, negative one, one three four six zero and then two negative three. Yep, I'm gonna, I always put the letters in. I just draw my lines first. New kids, we label our stuff too. Y'all better see letters on your stuff at the end. I'm gonna keep reminding y'all. Okay. Alright, so this was C. This was D. This was E. This was F. Nah. <coughs> they called it a rectangle. Looks more like a square. But they won't be wrong if this is a square because if y'all remember from when we did quadrilaterals, a square has all the properties of a rectangle, right? Has all the properties of a rhombus too, so it can be called either one of those things. You wouldn't be wrong in calling it that. <coughs> Uh, but what I would do on this one, they want us to find perimeter, so we're finding the distance around the figure, yes? On this one, before I start <coughs> uh, doing Pythagorean, I would go ahead and get my lengths of all my sides first and compare them to see which sides I don't have to do twice. So I'm going to do all my triangles right now. This one, this is 3 and 4. This one. That's three and that's four. Do this one. 
That's three, that's four. Yeah. <coughs> All four of them have the same two numbers. What shape is this? This is a square. <coughs> so, they want to know the perimeter of a square, basically. I'm going to do Pythagorean once, and then to find the perimeter, what I'm going to do after I get that number. Yeah, four times the uh, length of that one side, yes? <coughs> that is the formula. Alright, so Pythagorean for this would be 3 squared plus 4 squared equals C squared. Once again, those who haven't been with us, whenever we're doing this on the graph and we find using Pythagorean, that side that we're missing is always going to be our C. That slanted side is always going to be our hypotenuse. 9 plus 16 equals C squared, 25, yeah. But I told y'all, this is a 3, 4, 5. This is one of the ones you should recognize at a certain point. <clears throat> I wouldn't even have to show work on this one, but y'all gonna make y'all show work. And then from there, perimeter equals 4 times S. S for us is 5. Perimeter equals 4 times 5. Perimeter equals 20. <coughs> Hopefully you get one that easy. May not. I don't know. This next one, I know you're going to see this for sure. Granted, I guarantee it's going to be on your test. A problem like this. <coughs> this next one, calculate the area of triangle ABC with the altitude CD thing I need you to notice that this is a triangle it's called ABC down here they give you four points though that third point is to help you create your altitude so when you connect this when you draw this figure just connect A B and C and then go back and put the point D on there and then draw your altitude <clears throat> so A negative six negative four that's my A, B is at 6, 5, C is at negative 1, up 6. I need my ruler back, Faith. Thank you. <laughs> you hit me with it. Salt. And then point D is at 2, 2. Point D is my other point for my altitude right here. Then I'm going to draw my altitude in. You can make it a full line or a dotted line. I don't know how you want to do it. Say when we find the area of this triangle. <coughs> Why? Why? What's the area of a triangle? We have base times height. <coughs> Let's write the formula so we know what we need. Uh, on this triangle that we have on our graph, uh, which segment will represent our base in the cell? Say it again? No, sir. Louder. Isaiah, what you said? AB. From A to B will be my base. I don't know that length. Obviously, I need to find that. What will represent my height? CD. I'm just trying to help y'all understand what, what two sides y'all need to find. So you know where to do Pythagorean at. So Pythagorean, the first way is going to go from A to B. That's going to give me my base. I'm going to do it down here. So A, B is going to be, and then this count right here is 6 to, I mean 5 to negative 4, that's 9. 
the count this way is from negative 6 to positive 6. That's 12. So that's 9 and 12. <coughs> so it's 9 squared plus 12 squared equals c squared. This is another common one, too. I already know my answer, but. 81 plus 144 equals c squared. 225 equals c squared. Square root, square root. 15 equals c. <coughs> so in this case, my base is going to be 15. Then I need to go back and find my altitude, my height. So I'm going from here to here. With my triangle, and that's three this way, and that's four this way. <laughs> Another common one. Once, once again, once I get three and four, we just got three and four up top. You should know what your answer is gonna be, but we're gonna do that math out to the side anyway. CD equals three squared plus four squared equals C squared. Nine plus sixteen equals C squared. Twenty-five C squared. Square root, square root. That's a nasty square root. Five equals C. <laughs> so those are my two numbers there. My base is fifteen, my height is five. Using those in the formula, A equals one half times my base fifteen times my height five. A equals what? Thirty seven point five. Uh. All right. The practice is not too dissimilar from this, so you should. <clears throat> so I'm on home learning. I'm doing number two. That example for you. It's the only one I'm doing. It says that shown in the diagram below, the radio station KMA is increasing the radio listening radius from 40 miles to 50 miles. How many additional square miles of listening area to the nearest tenth will the radio station gain? So, you know how y'all should know how our radio works. Our radio signal it shoots out all directions, a circular direction, each way, creates a radius each way. <clears throat> and it's saying right now they can reach 40 miles out in each direction with their radio signal. Uh, they're trying to increase their bandwidth to go out 50 miles. What? I said 50 miles. What? Why are you distracting me? Oh, who cares? <coughs> Faith, I'm recording right now. Huh. What you're trying to find is this space right here, the additional uh, area that they're going to increase once they increase their uh, radio signal out that far. This is their original length right here, 40 miles. What they're trying to get to is all the way out to 50. To figure that out, <coughs> I want to know the area of the bigger circle or the big circle. And I'm going to take that and I'm going to subtract that from the area of the small circle. And that'll give me that additional area right here. Y'all follow what I just said? The big circle subtracted by the smaller circle. That'll give me this additional area that we got in here. <coughs> so I'm doing area of a circle twice. Area equals power r squared. And then I'm going to do area equals power r squared. Might as well write the formula down twice. For the big circles, area equals 3.14 times 50 times 50. For the smaller circles, area equals 3.14 times 40 times 40. And then you need those two numbers. Thank you. Got you. Five thousand twenty-four. All right. 
Alright, so there's two areas he got and his numbers are correct from what I remember last period. And after that you need to subtract to get the additional area that was covered. Two thousand eight hundred and twenty six is what Faith is showing me. So this is 2,826 miles of additional <coughs> radio listening radius that they covered, or area. <coughs> like I said, number two on the front is very similar to that one where you have to subtract the two circles. On the difference at the end on number two on the front, they want to know a price of, uh, I think it's like they're laying concrete pavement in a circular maybe around a pond or something <coughs> and they want to know how uh, what's the price they're going to have to pay so you got to multiply by the price at the end you should be able to do it though uh, only other things I have to say is like I said you got to decide when you're doing area or perimeter on these graphing ones <coughs> for example on number four on the front I need y'all to make the right decision on the front number four it says a design for a logo so I'm back to the front y'all Design for a logo is shown below. The company wants to create an outline of a logo of steel tubing for a sign. How much steel tubing would the company need? Round your answer to the nearest thousands. That's three decimal places. <coughs> On this one, they want to know how much steel tubing would be needed to outline whatever this logo. Am I doing area or perimeter? Say again. Perimeter. Keyword there is outline. I just need to make sure y'all make the right decision on this. <laughs> you can't screw number three up because at the end it says what would the total area be. So if you mess that up, that's on you. <laughs> number three is talking about uh, them putting in sprinkler systems for a baseball field. They want to know how much area they're going to cover. Yeah. So you should know what two shapes you got to split into on that one. I should be good on this. Handle your business. Be smart about number one. <laughs>